So hello everyone and a very good evening to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247 where we are going to discuss some more important questions from the PIB news which are relevant for all the government exams. All right, so without any delay, let's begin with the very first question which says, consider the following statements with respect to the report State of Inequality in India which has been released by Economic Advisory Council to Prime Minister. Very, very important question and in the upcoming RBI grade B, uh, grade B exam, you can expect this, uh, you can expect one or two questions from this. So this report, remember it has been released by Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister and you have to identify the correct statement about this report out of these three statements. All right, so let's talk about this report. Remember, this has been released by Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, but it was compiled by Institute for Competitiveness. This is again very, very important to remember this. Take care. And this report, guys, consists of two parts. Number one is economic phase nets and number two is socio-economic manifestation. And these two parts are focused on five key areas, which are called income distribution, labor market, health, education and household characteristics. So this report is focused on these five key areas and it has been divided into two parts, which are economic facets and socio-economic di dimensions, right? Now let's talk about the key highlights from this report. So remember, if I talk about the income distribution and labor market, combined so in the year 2019, 20, and remember all the data, all the data are from the year 2019, 20, or you can say till 2019, 20. So in 2019, 20, the highest percentage people who are working was of self-employed people. Sabse zyada low konte, sabse zyada percentage of people who were working are uh, were self-employed. Okay. Followed by the regular salaried workers and the casual workers. Right. The share of self-employed workers also happens to be the highest in lowest income category. Okay. The lowest income category hai, usme bhi self-employed workers ka number sabse zyada tha. To humare desh mein self-employed workers basically zyada hai as compared to the regular salaried workers or the other casual or wage workers, right? The country's unemployment rate is 4.8 percent, which is abhi currently bahut zada hai isse. But this is about 2019-20. That's why this is 4.8 percent, and the total worker population ratio is 46.8 percent, right? Talking about other key area, which is health. So from around 1 lakh 70 thousand. Total health centers in India, in centers in India in the year 2005, the number has now been increased to around 1,85,000, which is not much increase. In 2005, in 2020, in 2015, health centers have been So this is, I would not say that it is a very big achievement. Hai, right? States and union territories like Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Chandigarh, these, these states have made significant progress in establishing the health center in their respective states and UTs, right? 58.6% of women received antenatal checkups in the first trimester in the year 2015-16, which is now 70%. Now, ka matlab pe 2019-20 hai, yaad rakna, which is now 70%, right? 78% of women received postnatal care from a doctor or an auxiliary nurse, okay? Talking more about health dimension, so 79.1% of children received Postnatal care within two days of delivery. Nutritional deprivation in terms of overweight, underweight and anemia is a major cause of concern as per this report. And low health coverage which leads to high out-of-pocket expenditure. All these things directly affects the poverty incidence and that is why these areas need a focused attention from the stakeholders. Okay. Now talking about <clears throat> the education and household conditions. So remember... By 2019-20, 95% of schools have functional toilet facilities. 80.16% of schools have functional electricity. The gross enrollment ratio has also increased between the period of 2018 to 2019-20 at all the levels. Primary, upper primary, secondary, senior secondary, sabhi level pe jo gross enrollment ratio hai, wo of course increase hua hai. Right? Now I have a question to you all. What is the target of gross enrollment ratio as per the new education policy? Write down in the comments, right? And I'm asking for the school level. And you have to tell me for the college level as well. Because school level or college level, dono ke alag alag hai that what is the target of GER? 
as per new education policy right so that's it about this report isse zyada detail mein mat jana because bahut sare unnecessary data is ke andar given hai which will not be asked in your exam okay so only the important data jo ki humne yahan pe abhi padha hai this is only the important part so in 2019 20 the highest percentage was of regular salaried workers nahi abhi abhi maine aapko chilla chilla ke bataya hai the highest percentage is of uh, the self employed people jo self employed workers hai unka percentage sabse zyada hai the country's unemployment rate is 4.8% as on 2019 20 bilkul sahi baat hai and the report has been compiled by institute for competitiveness this is also correct so 2 and 3 option b will be the correct answer i hope this question is clear very easy question now question number 2 pe aa jate yes so ministry of health and family welfare headed by mansukh mandaviya uh, has released the findings of assessment of ayushman bharat health and wellness center so see basically there there was an assessment of ayushman bharat health and wellness center in 18 states of india and with respect to that the data has been the data have been released now remember in this particular uh, release uh, there are not much important data isme koi bahut zyada important data nahi hai but yes kyunki ye kafi important uh, release hai so that's why i am discussing it and this 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 assessment was done in 18 states theek hai do remember this the assessment has been done by two ngos which are gram and jhp go now please don't go into the details of these two ngos uh, not relevant for the exam and an, another organization so you have to determine the name of that third organization with the help of which this assessment was done all right so let's talk about this news ministry of health and family welfare has released the findings of uh, you know aishman bharat health and wellness center assessment which was done in 18 state and it was a joint effort of these two ngos which are gram and jhp go and from the ministry side it was aims new delhi theek okay? or you can say from the government side it was aims new delhi which has contributed in this assessment right now this implementation of aishman bharat health and wellness center scheme is on track as per this report it is on track and all the and all the targets which have been set uh, to be achieved by their by the month of december 2022 will be completed jitne bhi targets hai jo ki 2022 december tak complete hone the un sabhi ko achieve kar liya jayega as per this assessment right overall there has been an improvement in equity in access despite existing constraints such as infrastructure availability and status of peripheral health facilities despite the problems of infrastructure and other uh, facilities जो एक्सेस है इक्विटी एक्सेस टू द क्वालिटी हेल्थ केयर वो उसमें के अंदर इंक्रीमेंट हुआ है क्लाइंट सेटिस्फेक्शन विद द सर्विसेज प्रोवाइडेड वाज मच हायर इन द हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेंटर देन दोस इन द नॉन हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेंटर्स ठीक है सो जो क्लाइंट सेटिस्फेक्शन था वो ज्यादा था अमंग दोज हु रिसीव सर्विसेज फ्रॉम द हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेंटर एज कंपेयर टू दोज हु रिसीव सर्विसेज फ्रॉम नॉन हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेंटर राइट and the evaluation also brought out the requirement of a definite timeline for rolling out all the service packages of course there is a need of timeline without timeline agar aap koi kaam kar rahe ho to bekar hai mat karo band kar do right so all these things have been uh, jo ye jitna bhi cheeze hai ye humne discuss kari yahi cheeze important cheeze hai is report mein so you can see if i talk about uh, the objective point of view theek hai jo objective questions ke hisab se agar hum isko dekhe so no question can be asked except this that which organization or which uh, organizations have you know contributed in assessment of this uh, ayushman bharat health and wellness center scheme theek hai yahi pucha ja sakta hai iske alawa kuch nahi but yes you can make use of these points while writing an answer on any question which is based on health right so therefore guys the correct answer is what option a aims new delhi because that is the organization which along which along with gram and jhp go has released has done the assessment of this particular scheme moving ahead to question number 3 which ministry has signed an mou with national research development corporation for smooth implementation of scheme for enhancement of competitiveness in the indian capital goods sector so if you remember kuch time pehle hi we have discussed this scheme theek hai the total outlay for this scheme i hope you remember it is 1207 crore and this will be the question jo ki aapke exam mein aayega theek hai agar is scheme mein se aaya to 
So remember the Ministry of Heavy Industries, which is headed by Mr. Mahendra Nath Pandey. Mahendra Nath Pandey ji. So Pandey ji is a minister. Hai. And this ministry has signed an MOU with National Research Development Corporation for effective implementation of this scheme, which is known as Scheme for Enhancement of Competitiveness in the Indian Capital Goods Sector. Right. Now under this MOU, remember, under this MOU, this NRDC will conduct the activities like evaluation and review of the implementation of the scheme. They will conduct the awareness generation program for the stakeholders. This, uh, this NRDC will manage the intellectual property rights of the investors, of the manufacturers. All these things will be taken into consideration under this MOU by NRDC. Okay? Now this scheme, as I told you, it was launched for providing assistance to common technology development and services development with a total outlay of 1207 crores. And out of this 1207 crores, budgetary outlay kitna tha? 975 crore, 975 crore and the rest 232 crore is the industry contribution. Okay? So therefore guys, the correct answer will be what? Ministry of, Ministry of Heavy Industries, Option C, headed by Mahindranath Pandey is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number 4. A committee has been formed by Ministry of Textiles to discuss, deliberate and prepare a robust action plan for bringing out a tangible improvement in cotton industry. Who is the chairperson of this committee? Very important question aa sakta hai. But kyunki abhi ye sirf committee hi bani hai, to isi liye uh, there is no details, theek hai? So you should, uh, you can, uh, aapko sirf is committee ke baare mein pata hona chahiye, theek hai? You just have to know about this committee because abhi details to kuch hai nahi, right? Aur objective clear hai. The objective of forming this committee is to bring out a plan so that we can have a tangible improvement in the cotton industry. And the chairperson of this committee is sometimes known as Cotton Man of India. He is Suresh Bhai Kotak. Option E is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number 5. Name the mission which has been announced by Ministry of Education headed by Dharmendra Pradhan to develop uh, the enabling ecosystem across the country for teacher education or faculty development. Now this, this mission has only been announced. It has not been launched. Please don't get confused. It has only been announced. Okay? The detailed guidelines uh, are awaited. Okay? And remember this mission. Okay? This mission will develop enabling ecosystem across the country for teacher education or the faculty development. Okay? And the name of this mission guys is Malve Mission. Option A will be the correct answer. Question number 6. Now you can see that in such type of question there is no need of details. So that's why I think you will be to I think you will be able to Question number 6. Which country has signed an MOU with India for ensuring supply of fertilizers to India? Again, an MOU based question and I don't think there is a need to go into the details. Okay? This country guys is Jordan. Option B is the correct answer. Question number 7. Again, a one marker question. Which of the following organizations has organized Industry Connect with Center of Excellence Conclave? Industry Co Center of Excellence se connect karne ke liye this conclave was organized by Central Institute of Petrochemical Engineering and Technology. Option B will be the correct answer guys to this question. Okay. And question number 8. Which department or departments has signed an MOU with Government E-Marketplace and CSE e Governance Services Limited for advocacy, outreach, mobilization, capacity building of last mile government buyers, sellers and service providers in public procurement. Basically, they want to ask that the Government E-Marketplace uh, or CSC E-Governance Services Limited with which department has signed MOU so that the government department of government buyers and sellers can be easy for them. Right? This department is Department of Post. Option C is the correct answer, guys, to this question. And guys, the last question for today. Which state has recently became, become the 17th state to launch its MyGOV platform to promote active citizen partici participation and engagement in governance and policy making? Which okay, state is the 17th state ban gaya hai to launch its own MyGOV platform? So this is MyGOV Karnataka. My GOV Karnataka and therefore option D Karnataka is the correct answer. Okay. And that's it for the session today guys. I hope all the questions and 
their answers are clear and their explanations are also clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much for watching goodbye take care and god bless